Hi guys, Gibran here. I want to apologize for taking almost two weeks to make this video. Things have been kind of hectic these days. Uh, wedding season's coming up. I'm trying to coordinate with all the brides and grooms. Um, and I do a lot of outdoor family portrait stuff, so I'm scheduling those for, for spring and summer. So things are, things are kind of crazy. Uh, but the good news is that I'm back, and today we're going to talk about shutter speed. All right, so what is a shutter speed? Shutter speed is the, the time it takes, the length of time it takes to take uh, the picture, all right? In your camera, there's a shutter. And shutter, when you take the picture, shutter opens and shutter closes, all right? When shutter opens, light comes in, the sensor, it hits the sensor, the sensor captures the picture, shutter closes. Very simple. All right, so there are different shutter speeds. Okay, you could you could pick faster shutter speeds will basically freeze the motion. When do you use the slower shutter speed? When you don't have enough light. It's similar concept to the aperture video. And if you haven't seen the aperture video yet, please go back and watch the aperture video first. Um, so it it helps you understand the whole concept. All right, so. What happens if the shutter opens and closes really fast? There's not a lot of light coming in, all right? So your pictures could be underexposed depending on your light situation. During the daytime, um, sunny day, let's say, you're not going to have that problem, most likely. You know, like if you go with 1,000 of a second, 2,000 of a second, you're not going to have that issue. Now, indoors, when there's not a lot of light, yes, you could, you could um, have that problem. So, uh, let's say you're taking a picture of a sunset, and if you pick a really fast shutter speed, it's going to be dark. So what do you do? You slow your shutter speed down, all right? Your shutter opens for, let's say, I don't know, a second, two second, three second. There's no formula for this because it all depends on the lighting situation. Um, it depends on what aperture uh, value you have picked. Every, it, it's, it's a whole combination, all right? So anyway, if the shutter is open for a longer period of time, more light's coming in, and now your picture is not going to be underexposed. But you have to make sure that your camera is on a tripod, because while you're taking the picture, and if your hand shakes just even a little bit, or the subject uh, moves, uh, your picture is going to be blurry. All right, so you have to make sure that you use a tripod or place the camera. Uh, where it's completely still. So this is a basic concept. Now, here's a question. Can you slow your shutter speed down even if there's plenty of light? Meaning you don't need any light, but can you still do some tricks by slowing the shutter speed down? And the answer is yes. You can take pictures of, uh, let's say, waterfall. Okay, coming down from I don't know, what do you call them, mountain or something, whatever. If you slow that shutter speed down, what it's going to do is it's going to create that really silky look, that silky, dreamy effect, and that is achieved by slowing your shutter speed down. You would have to adjust your aperture, though, because when you slow your shutter speed down, there's a lot of light coming in. The picture's going to be really overexposed. So what you do is that you pick a bigger aperture value number, um, f18 maybe, f22, and what's going to do is it's going to shrink the aperture size. Now there's not a lot of light coming in, however, your shutter is still open for a longer period of time. So it sort of balances it out, and at the same time you will get that nice, silky, smooth effect. And if it's still overexposed, you would have to probably use the filter, and it will basically block uh, some of the sunlight. Now at nighttime you can do really cool stuff um, with sunsets by um, slowing the shutter speed down. Um, what else? Picture of let's say a skyline and there's a bridge or whatever and there's a lot of cars going and you can actually um, pretty much make all the cars disappear and all you'll have that nice streak going on, you know, like white and red light going on. That is also cheap by slowing your shutter speed down. Okay. Let's look at the camera and see where we can go to actually change the shutter speed. Then we'll look at a few sample pictures that I took and we'll take it from there. Alright guys, right now the 
my camera set on manual. If you haven't watched the video on aperture and shutter speed and ISO, then I suggest you finish all the videos before you start taking pictures on manual. All right, so this video is on shutter speed, so let's just put it on your shutter speed. This is on Nikon models. For Canon users, this is going to be TV. All right, I don't know why it's getting blurry. All right. So right now it's on shutter speed, and this is semi-automatic. What you have to pick is the shutter speed, which is right here. Remember, this is your f-stop, which is for your aperture. This is your shutter speed displayed right here, and you change your shutter speed on Nikon model. I don't know where, where you change it on Canon. My Sony one, I was doing it here. On Canon, I do it moving by moving this dial right here. All right. So you notice that as I'm changing the shutter speed, as I'm increasing the shutter speed, the F number is decreasing. Why? Because as you increase the shutter speed, less light is coming in. So the camera is picking up a smaller F number, so the aperture opens up to get more light in. Okay? So, if you want to mess with it, put it on shutter speed and just take pictures at a at a at a fast shutter speed or, or, or slow shutter speed. Again, you don't have the freedom to pick your own F stop, so that could be a slight problem for you. Alright, so let's uh, let's take some picture. Let's listen to the sound of of um, fast shutter speed and slow shutter speed. Alright, so let's say two fiftieth of a second, this is how it's gonna sound like really fast okay let's slow this down and pick let's say two tenth of a second two tenth of a second is basically half a second right see that there was a slight interval alright let's do one second how do you know it's one second you got these colon things alright so that's one second now the camera is going to take one second to take a picture click click oops it's getting out of focus sorry two seconds sorry this was two tenths of a second I'm an idiot <laughs> uh, two seconds See, now the camera basically, the shutter was open for two seconds, more lights coming in, very, very simple concept. You just have to make sure that when you're doing longer exposure, your camera is on a tripod. I put it on timer. I don't even, I don't even press a button. When I'm doing longer exposure, I don't even press this button because while, when you press this button, you can actually have a slight camera shake, even if it's on a tripod. So what do I do? I put this on a timer right here. And then I learned this trick from Scott Kelby, an amazing photographer. What he does, he, he places his finger here and he just rolls it off, rolls it off. I mean, if you're not used to it, you know, you could just press it like this. But right now it's on timer and so when it's on a timer, you're not really pressing this while the picture is being taken. So it basically eliminates all the all the camera. Alright, guys. Let's all take right. a look at now this. Now let's picture. take some sample pictures. This was taken at um, here. Let me look at this was taken at one sixtieth of a second, and as you could see, this is not sharp. It's actually blurry. The reason why it's blurry because there's motion involved in it, and the shutter speed was not fast enough to capture everything. Um, clean and sharp, and it's very common when you photo when you're photographing kids. Kids are constantly moving, and the picture comes out blurry. We end up blaming the kids when actually it's our fault for not picking the right shutter speed. All right, so how do we make this cleaner? Well, we increase the shutter speed. So in this picture. Um, I picked a shutter speed of 500th of a second, you know, just just for 
demonstration purpose. Um, 500th of a second is a very fast shutter speed. As you can see, the water, everything is clean. On the on the on the bottom right side, you could see all the drops. You can count them. Um, you don't have to go with 500th of a second um, every time you shoot. You know, it all depends on the lighting situation, and especially indoors, 500th of a second is obviously going to be challenging. So you pretty much have to play with it. Um, you know, uh, let's say you're doing indoors and you really want to increase your shutter speed, but there's not enough light. Then you mess with your ISO setting, which is again, which is going to be a separate video. So so stay tuned for that. All right now, what if I slow down my shutter speed? All right, so in this picture, I use half a second exposure, and that created that silky smooth, um, dreamy look that I was talking about earlier. Now, keep in mind that I had to pick a much uh, bigger aperture value. In this picture, I picked f18. The reason why I had to pick f18 is because when you slow your shutter speed down, there's a lot of light coming in. And if you're not going to shrink your aperture size, the picture is going to be overexposed. So I went with f18. You could try f12, f22. Again, no formula. You just have to have to play with it. So this is how you get um, that silky smooth effect by slowing down your shutter speed. All right, now the next picture, you can see it's overexposed. I did that on purpose. Uh, the reason why it's overexposed because I was using half a second exposure, same exposure as previous one, but instead I went from f18 to f5, and now there's too much light coming in because f5. At f5, the aperture opened up and way too much light basically came in. So you have to pretty much play with your settings, and you'll get you'll get used to it. Totally different settings um, you'll be using um, when you're doing these tricks at nighttime. I want to thank you guys for sticking around. Um, this is not the end of the shutter speed video. I just didn't have enough time to take. Um, you know, different, uh, a lot of other samples. So I'm going to make a separate video for um, nighttime long exposure where we'll mess with the shutter speed. One I'll make during the day at fast, like really fast shutter speed, and show you that you don't necessarily have to pick the super fast shutter speed, um, even though there's enough light to capture um, to freeze the motion because the picture may look a little bit of static that way. Um, if you think the video helped you, please rate, comment, subscribe. I'm also going to start making behind the scene videos of when I go shoot on different events or I'm doing portrait photography for other clients and post that on my Facebook fan page, which is same as my channel name, um, Photographers on YouTube. So please uh, join that as well. And until next time, keep clicking.